As you're laying out your work, I want to introduce one concept to you that can really help make it a lot more visually interesting and have a lot more impact. And specifically, that's drama. Uh, you can easily add a bit of drama and vastly improve your designs. Let's take a quick look at some examples that I've seen recently. Um, so these aren't actual designs from anybody, just copies of some that I've seen posted for feedback. Um, so this could be the case where uh, if it's a logo or just a word mark for a concept, it's just a rather large circle with some text on top of it. Uh, all, all to say fairly kind of boring almost, kind of flat. There's nothing notable or great about it. So the other thing to note about, uh, so what's good here is this, this yellow and this black, they stand out enough. There's enough drama or contrast that you can read it. You know, one important thing to mention, you know, if this was a darker type of color, where it'd be very hard to read that, you want to make sure that there's enough difference, drama, contrast between the text and the background to make sure it's legible. But this one was fine with the yellow that was chosen. Let's uh, back up there to get to that. So in this case, what if we played with the shape and its position? What if we played with the size of the text? Let's see what that might look like. So I'm going to go ahead and copy. Uh, one of my favorite tricks, we're just using Canva today. You can do this type of layout work in any program, of course, Word, um, Google Slides, PowerPoint. Today we'll use Canva. So what if the title was just a lot bigger? You know, this, even in this one too, we can increase that a little bit. It's nice to, even with that drama, the idea that the there's enough difference between the text can make that interesting. Right? So that, that creates kind of an interesting, immediately you can kind of see the impact that has, how much more notable it is, how much more purposeful it feels. I'll tell you what, let's move this just to the side. Let's take a control C, control V, let's copy it, we'll move it over. What if we go even wilder? Let's, um, let's make it so large that it's going to have to go onto two lines to barely fit in. So I've just uh, put it to a new line. I'm going to go up to spacing, reduce the line height so the two lines get together. Right. Now in this case here, let's say this still isn't quite as close as I'd want it. Uh, just copy and paste the two various words. You know, don't, can feel don't feel constrained if a particular shape is not going to get you where you want to. Just think of other ways that you can Oops, wrong word. <laughs> Think about other ways to circumvent it and get where you want to. So in this case here, if you wanted to really make it larger, right? So that becomes kind of interesting and tell you what, we do one more copy. And I just want to show two more ideas. Uh, I want to continue along with this one. What if the the of this was to, to create some drama, like some tension because it's not going to be centered so, you know, if everything's kind of expected, one, two, three, four, everything is centered, everything's aligned, um, which, you know, conversely, one of my big suggestions when you're doing design, of course, is to line up everything, make sure everything's aligned. However, if everything looks good and it's already aligned, if you unalign something and it still looks great, that creates this tension, this interest in it. So in this case here, if we reduce the size of it a little bit and we move that first word to the left, it creates kind of an interesting tension that we can kind of play with. And the last thing I said, as opposed to what might be expected as far as text inside of a circle, what if the circle instead didn't come across the entire one? Right? What if instead it kind of, <clears throat> as opposed to expectation to create some drama, we had it only kind of conflict with the shape and it goes in the top left there. So as you can see from where we started, where it was just small text inside of a big circle, just sitting there, what if instead we increased it? And simply with that one, simply increasing the size of the, size of the text, much more dramatic and interesting. What if we really increased it? In this case here, we you know, really blew it up till it almost took up the entire shape. And immediately you can kind of see how that feels like a bit more like a logo as opposed to what we were. Here's where we started, played around with that shape. And this duplication trick, and duplicate the slide, duplicate the page in Word, wherever you're actually playing with it, I, I highly recommend it because it just lets you play without worrying that you're breaking anything. And you can see where you can land. But again, here too, after we took that, we also tried, okay, now let's you know, subvert expectations and that everything else is centered. Let's move one word across and see how that plays. 
That was interesting. And same thing with the circle. Let's break it, have it break the text box and kind of go up and to the left. And again, that becomes kind of an interesting conversation. You know, I, I'm not going to try to say that these are good or this is like so much. Well, I'll say it's better than what we started with, but of course you want to play with it and work with it. But I think you can see the benefit of thinking, how can we make this more dramatic, more impactful, more interesting? Okay, so let's do that here too. For let's, We've put together a very simple um, back to school sale from the book company. So text, and then we have uh, the simple photo. Everything's kind of square lined up at the very least. So it's solid, but it's a bit dull. There's no drama to this. Let's play with this again. Let's duplicate it and play around with the various sizes. So all the text here on the left side is fairly flat. There's no kind of a real difference between, at least there's a good difference between the title and the subtext. That part's good, but there's nothing really notable about it, right? It's fairly basic, fairly boring in a sense. So what if we, you know, those same principles, what if we kind of pumped up the size of this Okay, but the easier way to do it is probably let's manually put it to three lines and then we can play with the size. So one, two, three, spacing. And I don't have this prepared in any way, honestly, so I'm just trying to <laughs> do this a bit off the cuff. Let's see what we can do about uh, perhaps taking a color from the photo or just making it some, ideally if you have some sort of brand color, you can add a bit of color until this. Right, we got these three, we have a date. So I wouldn't mind seeing maybe an icon in here to kind of break it, like make it more notable as opposed to just kind of flat text. So add some drama to it, add some elements that will help. If we go with a, let's say calendar. icon in just to try to help cement the fact that it's a piece of information and also just add a interesting visual elements now you know it's you can't just add visual elements all the time and expect it to work like it, things become busy so if you I want to add 15 elements to try to make it exciting it doesn't really work but when it's especially when it's a kind of a point to draw home the fact that this is notable this is a piece of information you need to um, this is a different type of information from the rest. In this case, like it's a date. That then it becomes kind of interesting. Okay, so we added a little bit of color. We added, we increased the size of the text. Doing some layout stuff. We added a small icon here. You know, I don't think I'm not going to spend too much time in making this too much more dramatic. I also think that so this photo just being perfectly kind of squared up with the content feels a bit dull and it's just a you know kind of flat book is, is there a more dramatic photo we can use and then what kind of um, applications can we do to that well let's check it out one trick I always like to have is to really think about the space you're working in like a canvas and what can we have that kind of bleeds off the canvas to create that drama uh, let's see here photos I had recently found a good one that should work for us here we go so same kind of idea, it's books, book sale. Let's increase that so it takes up that entire right side. Right, so it's more note, the photo itself is a bit more dynamic and interesting. The size and scale of it, since it takes up now the entire page becomes interesting. Let's get this to the back. I covered up my nice little icon that we added. So I'll come over here to the, oops. Oop, clicking all over the place. Don't worry. Control Z, Control Z, undo. Undo is our friend. <laughs> First, second time I've hit duplicate. Okay, position. Two back. And there we have it. So the photo is much more interesting. It's bold. It takes up the entire space. I'm going to make that even a little bit larger. A lot more dramatic. We increase the size of some of the text and add a bit of color. We also added an icon so things are a bit more notable. So if you see where we started, you know, everything was fairly straightforward. Uh, nothing of real visual interest, so everything was nicely aligned and solid. But we took that up and tried to add a bit more drama, make it a bit more interesting visually, while still getting the information across. If you make it, if you're trying too hard to make it too interesting, you might actually ruin the message in that you can't see what you're trying to say. 
So that's the fine line you want to be careful of. But you can definitely see how this feels rather dull. And we've come here, this feels bold and dramatic and interesting. So last one. In the case of a, maybe this is a simple social post or somewhere else, I just want to tell people to come check out my blog. So we've got a cool photo of a nice background along inside of a phone to say, you know, I was going to allude to the fact that it's a website. You can come and check it out. And here's the text. Uh, now, in this case, we can play around with the, again, this is where it's a square, simple photo just sitting in the middle, which on its own, it's not like it doesn't work, you know, especially when it's, you can see how with positioning, when it, there's a lot of empty negative space and everything's incredibly simple, that becomes interesting. That becomes dramatic. There's a tension to it. Especially you can imagine if you really you shrink this down even further. Because of how small, how much negative space it is, these small images speak volumes. So this isn't just a matter of double the size of everything. It's, again, how can we make this visually interesting? What can we do to make it stand out as opposed to it being obvious in that f photo of a certain size, text of a certain size, nothing else interesting. So let's go ahead and actually let's leave that on there because I found that a really interesting treatment. So we're going to make it super small. It's off to the side compared to the rest, which is, you know, all of this negative space. That's bold. That's kind of interesting. It's very different, right? How loud this speaks is very Apple-esque as far as a very subtle uh, use of negative space. Let's duplicate this one more time. It's a duplication to allow you to play around. And let's go the exact opposite. In this case, we went with minimalism, tiny, like using negative space. Let's blow this up huge. And let's also work with the shape. You know, the, we would almost expect when you see a photo to have everything lined up square. We saw that too in our book example. Uh, what if instead we'd subvert that? So we make it like nice and large. And we also have it like skewed as if the phone's kind of been thrown on a table and breaking on the outside of it. In this case too, we can uh, make this larger. Again, we'll want to go to the line height, so we'll click on the text, spacing, up at the line height, reduce that down. Now the actual blog itself seems a little bit small in comparison, so let's increase that. See, almost too much because as soon as it becomes too close to that, there's not enough difference, contrast, or drama to make it interesting. So I'd prefer to see that a little smaller. Just grabbing the corner here and bringing it down. You can almost like uh, have it more towards, if you see this angle of the phone, where it kind of like brings the user's eye into kind of the bottom right pocket and that's where I'm going to bring this. Tighten things up a little bit so it's a nice grouping. And there we have it. So the last thing I'm going to try, I'm not sure if this is going to work. I'm kind of curious if we can try a to pull out that coffee color. It might be a little too much. So we're going to see just to duplicate colors from the uh, design. Uh, not bad. That'd be kind of a uh, stylistic choice depending on how you like it. But as you can see, more notable, more interesting, more dramatic. So quick review of all of them. So we started with a simple circle, a little bit of text, not, not that notable, not that interesting. Simply by just increasing the main title's font, making it a lot bolder, making it a lot more dramatic, interesting. You can see the, the vast difference from the first design. In addition, we can also sub create drama by creating tension. So not having everything as expected, not have everything centered. So to have the, you know, this one piece of text kind of shoot off to the side becomes visually interesting. Same too with the circle. Instead of having it clearly just contain all the text, have it shoot off, have it break the text box on the left side. We started next with an ad for a book company. Uh, good text, good use as far as like the body text is different enough from the title itself but again, kind of dull, and this photo is just a flat square photo. What if we kind of blew up that photo, found a photo that's more visually interesting, one that kind of breaks into the main space, make the text even bolder, add a little bit of color. For the notable piece of information, use an icon to indicate what it is, and also draw the eye there, Friday into Monday, the actual date. So taking it kind of from bland, 
and adding some drama. And then lastly, with a social post perhaps of checking out my blog, photo, text, kind of no real drama to it, fairly static. Um, and just to show that it's not about doubling the size of everything, what if we took it and reduced it, made it a lot of negative empty space so that the items that are here speak volumes. You could actually imagine if we can have open sans light. Right? Even even yell even less, make it even like softer. Right? So the how how much impact, how much drama that has, because it's the only thing that's there, it's super small, instantly draws attention compared to the rest of the empty space. So it's not just about, you know, double the size, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but then finally, too, if you did go a bit louder, what if as a kind of subvert expectations a little bit, the instead of a square photo, skew it, make it off a little bit differently, make it huge. And then same thing with the font, make it bold, impactful, noticeable, dramatic. So a great way to think about it. And it's just a question you kind of ask as you went through. Is there a way within brand guidelines, within kind of the, the rest of the voice of this design that I'm creating, is there a way I can add more drama to make this design more impactful. So next time you work on a design, ask that question. Can I make this more dramatic and see what type of great results you come up with? Cheers to your next dramatic design.